My child, he who loves to serve the world knows not the world. The world is a true tyrant, and wretched slaves are they who serve it. How many things, what sacrifices does it not exact from its votaries, whom for all their services it repays with unceasing evils? It demands that its slave become the base tools for their passions, that they sacrifice body and soul, that they damn themselves without complaint. And when it has completed their destruction, it forsakes them as useless wretches, fit only for hellfire. Oh, at how great a cost do worldlings purchase their own ruin? If they did for me the half of what they do for the world, how happy should they be? And what saints, how cruel is the world's slavery under it? How many interior sufferings must be undergone? What hardships endured? And all this in the hope of obtaining such things as when once tasted cause death or such as will produce tortures either at present by the irksome possession of them or after a while by a bitter separation truly it is an iron yoke which presses on the neck of worldlings the weight of which no one does fully know unless he either tried it or considers it as he stands on the threshold of eternity Whoever desires to be saved must separate himself from the threshold of the world. There are those who by their mode of life, having outwardly bidden farewell to the world, inwardly captivated by the world, in most things govern themselves by worldly sentiments. There are others who by their condition in life obliges them to live exposed to the dangers of the world, who yet have so divested themselves of every affection of the world, that they never defy themselves with anything that is worldly. It is therefore not the kind of life which he leads, nor the shape of dress which he wears, that connects a man with the world, or estranges him from it, but the affection of the heart, the disposition of the soul. Therefore, he that is separated in heart from the world the most, those most closely, united to me, he is dearest to my heart, in whatever state of life he may live, wherever then my divine will has placed you, there do you serve me in holiness, since in every state and condition of life which is good in itself, you can live for me and sanctify yourself, although it remains true that a state of life separated from the world conduces most to secure salvation and to reach perfection. How many followers of the world there are who convinced of the world's wickedness see the necessity of renouncing it by a change of life, yet dare not do so, too fearful in case the world may rail at them. Is this your fortitude, you friends of the world, great souled forsooth, you are all, who, through fear of empty talk, dare not do what faith dictates, what reason approves, what your greatest interests demand? What are words but sounds passing through the air and disappearing? Can they stir so much as a hair on your head? Shall you be so faint-hearted, my child, that for the sake of such words that you would draw upon yourself ruin in the time and in eternity? Choose either to serve me, to be blissful in my service, and to enjoy the enduring delights of heaven hereafter, or to serve the world, to lead inwardly a wretched life, and, at the last, to undergo never-ending torments. Behold, life and death, good and evil, are placed before you. Whatever you prefer will be given to you. Come, my child, take up my yoke upon you, for my yoke is sweet and my burden light. My service, child, is not that of a tyrant, nor of a harsh master, but of a most loving father, who is near his children, who are submissive to him that he may help and entertain them. Love is the spirit of my service, and love finds all things easy. My commands are not heavy, and to those that love they are exceedingly light and sweet. Try and taste how pleasant it is to serve me, how delightful to enjoy my sweetness, how good to gain the possession of the very fountain of all good things. If you seek delights, you shall find the true ones in my service alone. All the pleasures of the world are either empty or pronunciate, but my consolation surpass beyond comparison. 
all the delights of earth. They ravish hearts by their purity. They satiate them by their truth. Many times they are so overwhelmed man that they give him a certain foretaste of those heavenly delights wherewith the blessed in paradise are embriated. He that serves me is not as the slave of the world who toils to gather for himself treasures on earth and in the end find his hands empty but he lays up for himself treasures in heaven where neither the rust nor the moth can destroy where thieves cannot dig them up nor carry it away all the wealth of earth compared with the treasures of heaven is only dust and nothingness. If you aim to be honoured, behold, what greater honour can be desired than to be with me, to be approved and distinguished by me. The glory of the world, where one man lures the other, is false and short-lived, but the glory of my service is true and shall endure forever. Greater is the least of my servants than the Lord of a kingdom in the world. Was there ever found a man who at the hour of death repented that he had served me? Yet at that last moment, how exceedingly do worldlings regret to have been in the service of the world, or if they do not be well, how much more wretched they are. Truthful in the saying, my child, that he who serves me faithfully during life possesses two heavens, the one in time, the other in eternity, and that he who spends his life in the service of the wicked world endures two hells, one now, another hereafter. Courage then, my child, bend yourself beneath the yoke, which is borne by the angels in heaven and the elect on earth, and beneath which they enjoy true bliss. Take it up joyously and bear it cheerfully. You serve the same Lord that is served by the blessed in heaven. Whilst you imitate them in their service, imitate them also in their cheerfulness. Let the slaves of sin and of the world be sad. Joy and exultation are the portion of my servants. Serve me then, but serve me with gladness. Let your heart for joy cheer up your countenance, and by the holy gaiety teach the world what blessedness there is in serving me.